there is a war. It's happening now. It will decide the fate of humanity. The time to choose sides has come. We are the resistance. We are the info war. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 16th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's tonight's top stories. Tonight, Obama pledges 3,000 troops to fight the Ebola threat. Then, the crackdown on Christians in Saudi Arabia. And McCain's mad that others don't hang out with his terrorist friends. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Meanwhile, John McCain, if you believe it, with real Al-Qaeda, with the Al-Qaeda Brigade, it's actually called the Bin Laden Brigade, that leads the Syrian forces. Obama has announced there will be boots on the ground after all. Now, of course, the enemy that the president has sent our troops without hesitation to go fight is the Ebola virus. Now, the U.S. has pledged 3,000 troops to West Africa, including engineers and medical personnel, to build 17 treatment centers with 100 beds each. They're going to train thousands of healthcare workers and establish a military control center or coordination of the relief effort, of course. Now, Obama's announcement marks his second within a week of new mission for the U.S. military. This was following last week's speech outlining a broad escalation of the campaign against the Islamic State militant group in Iraq and Syria. So once again, we have a humanitarian crisis that the U.S. must rush to solve. And of course, since it's for humanitarian means, the U.S. has a moral high ground. But we all know this is about getting a backdoor into Africa. Even after all of these years of exploitation, this is a country still rich in natural resources and so much more. Just like we saw with uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, basically, you know, what they're wanting to do is Syria, destroy this country in order to save this country. And let us just remind you that on the top of the Bilderberg agenda for this year was Africa's challenges. So we knew we would be seeing a lot more presence by the globalists in that country. So here we are with all of these headlines. So Obama is saying that he wants to send troops to help counteract this humanitarian crisis there in West Africa. But what about the crisis at our own border? Now, depending on who you ask, there is no threat at the border. Now, this is what's being spouted off by the Department of Homeland Security. They say there is no credible intelligence to suggest that there is an active plot by ISIL to attempt to cross the southern border. This is according to the New York Times. It was a declared in a written statement by Homeland Security officials. Now, here the, uh, Nimmo points out that Democrats are attempting to spin the warnings issued last month by government insiders. We are reported that in August, Judicial Watch cited high-level sources in the federal government stating ISIS would cross the border very soon and launch attacks. They had very high-level government insider sources saying that they were hearing radio chatter. But that is actually kind of a big Bingo point there. Here, if you go directly to the New York Times article, what the New York Times reports is that Democrats say opponents of President Obama are simply just playing on concerns about terrorism as part of their attempt to portray Mr. Obama as having failed to secure the border against illegal immigration. And there it is. Aren't the president and his fellow Democrats doing the exact same thing except for downplaying the threat of terror because they want to pass immigration reform? So they're accusing the right of upplaying the terror. They're downplaying it because they really need to just go ahead and after November pass this sweeping immigration reform. And once that happens, then they can go ahead and ramp up the terror threat at the border because as Rob Dew mentioned earlier on the radio show today, they're probably just going to go ahead and do away with the border all together, and then this will give them the excuse to terrorize us in the streets with MRAPs and heavily armed police force because it's for our safety. Now, one of the top liberal talking heads, Cenk Igar, he is of the uh, Young Turks, he says that he would bet money 
on Rand Paul becoming the next president of the United States. That's right, this is a top liberal voice saying this. He notes that Paul was a voice of reason on the issue of ISIS, saying that the Kentucky senator's opposition to bombing Syria, arming so-called moderate rebels, and intervening in the region stood in stark contrast to Hillary Clinton beating the war drums in line with establishment Republicans. Now, Hillary Clinton has repeatedly floated the erroneous talking point, one that's echoed by rhino Republicans, that Obama's failure to arm the Syrian rebels during the first phase of the uprising was what led to the emergence of ISIS. Now we know in reality, ISIS grew in strength as a result of being bankrolled and armed by America's closest allies, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Jordan. Now in addition, many of the weapons that were sent to FSA rebels were also seized by ISIS fighters. But hey, Hillary Clinton, she's gonna go on this campaign to just say, let's keep on doing the exact same thing that we were doing and hope this time it works. And I'm not talking about arming the rebels, I'm talking about voting for a Clinton again, or a Bush for that matter. Now indeed, just how will the US decide which of the rebels are the good guys? Now Congress is expected to vote this week on giving the Obama administration the authority to combat the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria by providing arms and training to someone but whom. And there are vast differences among Syrian rebel fighters there, it's a conglomerate of varying ideologies, social backgrounds, and loyalties. And the questions of who exactly is a Syrian moderate and whether these weapons will fall into the wrong hands loom large on Capitol Hill. A senior fellow with New America's International Security Program said, one of the problems is that whether or not someone is fighting under an Islamic banner or a Syrian revolutionary flag, they're often working together on different fronts. If they're fighting to take over the military base or airport, different groups ideologically predisposed will be fighting together. And that's exactly what we've reported before. Rebels admit that they are working with ISIS. They say they have all the money and the power in the region, so of course they're working together. And this is an old adage, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that is why voting to fund the rebels without a clear indication of who is with us is impossible. And of course, this is why Obama is so ever so thankful for those beheading videos because he says that it's got unprecedented support, which will help Congress go ahead and give him what he wants on Thursday. But joining forces is exactly what's happening. Here we have a report saying powerful Al Qaeda branches in Yemen and North Africa have issued an unprecedented joint statement Tuesday calling for jihadists in Iraq and Syria to unite against the common threat from a US-led coalition. They urge their brothers in Iraq and Syria to stop killing each other and unite against the American campaign and its evil coalition that threatens us all. And we have reports also of Syrian rebels and ISIS signing a non-aggression agreement in which they promise not to attack each other because they share a common enemy. And that is the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad and his Alawite regime. So it's okay to arm them because we all have a common enemy, right? We want to take down the president Assad there in Syria. But they just kind of want us to forget that eventually we're gonna to have to then go ahead and fight them, ISIS and all these other rebel groups to get them out of the way so that the West can do whatever it has planned for the region. But we're not, and when I say we, I mean the, uh, the uh, government there, I don't mean me, but we're not so great at figuring out who is our enemy. City of Austin tap water versus filtered city of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. 
The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139.